Коллеги, давайте начинать наше собрание. Dear colleagues, let us start our session. I'm inviting uh, our colleagues working in the remote access mode. Now I can see everyone. Good afternoon, dear colleagues, dear friends. I'm happy to welcome you at this session of the Dissertation Council of St. Petersburg University for the defense of thesis by Zolotarev Andrei Anatolovich for the degree of Doctor of Geological and Mineralogical Sciences, Specialty 25005, Mineralogy and Crystallography, on the theme, The Crystal Chemistry of Natural Titanous Silicates. First, let me introduce myself. I am Brusnitsyn Alexey Ilyich. I am Doctor of Geological and Mineralogical Science Professor of the Department of Mineralogy at Petersburg University. And by the order number 2907-1 on the 10th of April 2020, I was appointed chairman of this dissertation council. I am very pleased to introduce my colleagues, council members, who will also participate in today's session. First of all, let me introduce Olga Viktorovna Franka Minetska, Doctor of Geological and Mineralogical Sciences, Professor of Crystallography Department of St. Petersburg University. Evgeny Borisovich Buruk, Boris Evgenich, I beg your pardon, Doctor of Geological and Mineralogical Sciences, Head of Laboratory of Klopin Radium Institute. Oleg Johannes Sidra, Doctor of Geological and Mineralogical Sciences, Professor of the Crystallography Department of St. Petersburg University. And in remote access mode, we have Konstantin Viktorovich Litasov, Doctor of Geological and Mineralogical Sciences, Deputy Director for Research at the Very Shagan Institute of High Pressure Physics at the Russian Academy of Sciences. And Evgeny Vadimovich Galuskin, Doctor of Geological and Mineralogical Sciences, Professor of the Institute of Earth Sciences, a Faculty of Natural Sciences at Silesian University in, at Katowice, Poland. Colleagues, can you see? Can you hear us? Yes, colleagues are in touch. Uh, the degree uh, I uh, shall pip in. So the, uh, my mission is new today, so I shall keep reading. And uh, we have to follow the procedure exactly. And to avoid any uh, misunderstanding, any issues, uh, I will, I have to follow the adopted procedure. The degree applicant, of course, Andrei Anatolovich Zolotarov, our degree applicant, is also present, and his academic consultant, uh, Sergei Vladimirovich Krivovich, Doctor of Geological and Mineralogical Sciences, Professor, Corresponding Member of Russian Academy of Sciences, Head of the Crystallography Department at St. Petersburg University. Let me also inform you that our session is being recorded and broadcast online at St. Petersburg University website. The speeches are being simultaneously translated from Russian into English or, as appropriate, from English into Russian. Uh, during the uh, online broadcast website, it is possible to ask questions regarding the topic of the thesis and today's presentation. If there are any such questions, I, uh, I'm asking colleagues to introduce themselves and ask questions strictly related to the subject. The questions shall be forwarded to me, and I will be able to read them. And also inform you that in accordance with the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University, our dissertation council is considered competent if at least two thirds, but not less than four members are present. All the council members are present online and so we have the quorum and we may start the procedure let me set forth the following procedure of today's session summary report on the applicant summary report uh, uh, Andrei Anatolovich uh, 30 minutes questions and speeches of the members of the session council in turn each of us will have to talk and uh, the degree applicant shall answer questions. That will be followed by the open discussion. 
uh, where all questions, uh, including those set by sent by internet. Anyone who's willing to participate in the open discussion, we have the registration sheet over there. So please mention your name, place of employment, and position. And that shall be followed by the answers of a degree applicant, speech of the academic consultant, discussion of the uh, dissertation council members, open individual voting and making decision, and closing remarks of Andrei Anatolovich. Do uh, is, uh, does anyone have questions regarding the procedure? Uh, see, there are no questions. Then let us start our session, and uh, I will start with my summary report on uh, the degree applicant and his work. The thesis by Zolotarev Andrei Anatolovich for the degree of Doctor of Geological and Mineralogical Sciences, specialty 25005 Mineralogy and Crystallography, and the theme the crystal chemistry of natural titanosilicates was accepted for defense by the order of academic secretary at Pittsburgh University on the 10th of April 2020, 2896-1. Zotrev Antolovich is graduated our university uh, crystallography department and is currently working as associate professor at the crystallography department. His academic advice is a doctor of crystal uh, mineralogy head of the crystallography department at St. Petersburg University, Krivovich Sergei Vladimirovich, whom I have already introduced. Also, I'd like to inform you that a number of publications which set forth the main results is, uh, of the, uh, it includes 23 works, uh, three in publication journals, including the list approved by the Ministry of Science Education, Russian Federation, 20 publications in journals, included in the scientometric databases Web of Science and Scopus. The degree applicant submitted to the Academic Secretary of the University a full set of documents for acceptance of his thesis for consideration and defense, and all the documents comply with Article 12, Section 3 of the order. Uh, awarding the, uh, all the documents submitted by the document comply and are available uh, with our technical support staff. Uh, uh, there is opportunity to review the documents if anyone is interested. Do you have questions to the degree applicant? No questions. Then let me give the floor to the degree applicant, to Andrei Anatolovich, uh, to, uh, to uh, talk about his results. Uh, can you hear me? Good afternoon, dear council members, the chairman, the guests, let me present to you a report on the topic of the uh, crystal chemistry of natural titanosilicates. These slides show summarize the goals, objectives, objects, and methods of my study. Shall proceed straight to the essence, to the point. Titanium nanosilicates is now an established uh, meaning that a man with, uh, along with silicon oxygen tetrahedrons, titanium octahedrons, participate in the construction of the frame. Uh, these are uh, niobium, zirconium. Often, this, uh, this uh, titanium silicates are characterized by the presence of large canals and pores, which are filled with alkaline and alkaline earth cations and water molecules, which enables to classify them as uh, microporous, a number of synthetic analogs of uh, microporous titanosilicates are successfully applied or used to or will be used in the future in such technological spheres as catalysis, absorption, ion exchange, creation of nanocomposite materials. The first mineral about which I'd like to talk is a new uh, is, uh, Churbenskiaite, a simplified formula, levonite described the Hibin uh, alkaline massif, uh, and named after Professor Churbinsky. In this slide, you may see the formula in the main uh, is isomorphism forms of Churbinskiaite. The crystalline structure belongs to the new type of structures and can be described in modular terms accepted for minerals of the volerite group. From this point of view, the crystal structure of 
Chervinskaya consists of octahedral walls and diortho groups. For that, there are three types of uh, such walls uh, consisting of four, three, and five rebounded chains. The walls of three and five member octahedral chains have a common chain of ribbed octahedrons forming a continuous layer with a zigzag cross section which is a novelty for minerals of velarite group thus the crystal structure of chervinskite considering this aspect belongs to the new type of so-called wallpaper structures which are common in borates and should be mentioned that in the end in late 1970s Nikolai Vasilich Berlov uh, noted a similarity of borates and velarite minerals. Chirinskyite is a uh, iron dominant yet high ma manganese content enable us to predict manganese dominant analog and cation defi de deficient uh, analog. The chilmonite is a, a cation deficient protege and a, a rare heterophilosilicate uh, uh, found near Chilman Mountain in Kibini, uh, where the name started. Deficiency of cations in chilmonite is compensated by protonation of the carbonate groups. The basis of the crystal structure, chilmonite, has complex anionic layers uh, and should be mentioned that the s structure of tundrite is based on structurally identical layers, but s different cation content uh, is, uh, leads to significant modification of the structure, increases the interlayer stays and displacement of the layers relative to each other as compared to tundrite. It's a very typical uh, chilmonite and tundrite, but there is no evidence of transformation of one mineral into the other. Here, I'd like to say that chilmonite um, samples have been described with high uh, potassium content as a intermittent stage. The, another new mineral described by us is vetivite, is a new layered titanous silicate of, uh, belonging to the group of rinkite subgroup, the former group of rosenbushite, the structure of which is based on the, the so-called HOH blocks in terms of heterophilosilicates or titanosilicate blocks according to Sokolova. The mineral comes from nephilite uh, sinat pigmatite of Sakaryok alkaline massive and called after uh, Batila. Uh, as I have already said, the structure of minerals of this group are based on HOH blocks, where H is a heteropolyhedral layer consisting of polyhedrons associated uh, in uh, positions. Uh, in position, uh, consisting of positions of octahedral M2, M4, and M5. The closest mineral is uh, hyenite, is a mineral uh, belonging to the same group. The difference is that in the structure of uh, octahedral M3 is predominantly vacant, only 39% occupied with uh, water molecules. In addition, the occurrence of Y3 plus in the position of M1 affects the coordination of this position and uh, M3 positions. The coordination increases from 6 to 7. M1, M3 chains are transformed into turbomorite layers. So the uh, structure of bitvite and kyanite can be described as a, a consisting of two general models, cation deficient layer, uh, typical for such uh, minerals as mesendrite and um, 
typical for such minerals as dolomite. Is the similarity can be described in the following equation. Shkatolkalite is a well-known mineral described by Menshikov and his co-authors, called after the large pegmatite uh, Shkatulka, but until recently its structure remained unknown. The chemical composition was determined in three independent laboratories. These results are consistent with the results of the study of the crystal structure, taking into account all the difficulties of working with such minerals. The basis of the crystal structure Shkatulkalite consists of HOH blocks. The interlayer space is filled with sodium atoms and several partially populated H2O molecules. The maximum number of H2O, with all exceptions, is 10, mo mo 10 molecules per formula, which is manifested in our modified formula for Shkatulkalite. These three minerals are based on uh, epistolite and warnimite. All are based on the same topological type of HOH blocks with different layer symmetry. Both shkatulkalite and epistolite can be considered as derivatives wonimite and can be obtained from it, at least hypothetically, by removing some ions of uh, Na+, and subsequent hydration. They discovered pseudomorphosis testified that, at least in some environments, shkatulkalite is indeed a transformational mineral species. Mineral species formed as a result of transformation of the primary protophase, which inherits its main structural features according to the principle of structural inheritance of Alexander Petrovich Komikov. Thus, the first provision, one of the uh, uh, structure uh, uh, and earlier known Shkatulka light, belonged to new structural type of Chimanite and Betivit, have layered structure and modified versions of Tandrite and high night, while Chervinskyite is a new uh, wallpaper structure. Chervinskyite belongs to and has structure based on hydrophilicate, HIH blocks. Uh, the Ilmaikite is an idea, is a rare mineral found only in Jubilina pigmatite vein. Uh, Unlike crystals are unstable under atmospheric conditions, so it's hard to study it by any analytical methods. It has been determined that the mineral is probably monoclinic with some large parameters of the unit cell. And here we should say that these studies were conducted by our Leningrad colleagues. Later, Kamara and colleagues, Kamara and his colleagues studied the Ilma Jokite. Uh, monocrystals and obtained uh, uh, crystals at different centers, but the structural model was never obtained and deciphered the structure of this mineral. Separate, uh, some authors tried to obtain the structural model, but without success. So recently, we managed to select a well-preserved Elma Yorkite material from the collection of the Firstman Mineralogical Museum, which allowed us to collect data good enough to decipher and clarify the structure of this unusual mineral for the first time. The crystal stru structure of Elma Yorkite is very complex, contains 236 crystallographically independent positions of atoms, and is based on the titanium silicate framework of unprecedented complexity. This frame uh, can be described as follows. Two titanium octahedrons connected through a common rib form uh, two dimers, three dimers with parallel orientation form a tri, uh, triagonal prism with uh, forming uh, such prismatic titanium silicate nanoclusters. Four neighboring clusters are connected through additional tetrahedrons forming a full membrane. These rings are connected through partially occupied tetrahedrons in ribbons. You can see such a ribbon on the right. These ribbons are 
turned into layer, organized into layers, and layers are connected through tetrahedrons, the former uh, uh, cations and water molecules. Uh, the relation is uh, quite surprising. Surprising is surprisingly simple. One, two, three. As it also is quite surprising for such a complex mineral, is the that empirical formula. Of course, considering the dehydration and uh, uh, migration, Na migration, as was no, no, noted earlier, the crystalline structure of minerals can be described in terms of hierarchical organization. At the same time, a large number of hierarchical levels of structural organization reflect a high degree of system complexity. For this, from this point of view, the crystal structure Elma Jokite has eight level uh, hierarchical system and is very complex, as shown in this slide. The complexity of, the, of uh, Elma Jokite can be estimated quantitatively using the method proposed by Krivovich where the structural complex complexity is expressed in the amount of Shannon information per unit cell. Uh, the uh, value puts Ilma Jokite in the third place among the most complex minerals known today after Uingite and Morrisonite, uh, comparable, uh, comparable with the most complex frame mineral. Thus, the second provision can be formulated from the structural point of view. Majority of natural titan silicates are uh, average complexity. Uh, is the only difference is in my jokite. The cre uh, crystal structure is, is a hierarchically complex structure made of titan cell nanoclusters united by silicate tetra tetrahedrons. Uh, minerals of Lavozero group are accessory minerals of Nifilan sinites, typical for Lavozero and Cubini alkaline massives. With the formula shown here, the framework of crystalline structure of Lavozero group minerals is composed of hexahedral silicon oxygen rings connected through common vertices with isolated, which are connected through common faces. First, crystal chemical review, the structures of the group was made by Chernitsova and co-authors who proposed an elegant and comprehensive approach to their visualization using pseudocubic modules. As we have shown earlier, various uh, this, this responsible for formation of different structures for the minerals of the Lavozero group. Based on the detailed experimental data, we, together with our Moscow colleagues, Igor Pekov created the nomenclature of minerals of Lavozerite group based on five uh, uh, criteria. Each criteria is, is, is first is type of structure, cation pseudocopic modules for minerals, three types, and for synthetic Lavozerite, there's a fourth type. Second, prevailing cation in position M, zirconium or titanium, prevailing cation in position A. Uh, almost every is potassium, and prevailing cation Na, or vacancy in position B. Here, all the minerals can be divided into subgroups, cation uh, saturated and cation de deficient uh, groups, and prevailing cation in position C. And so here, most often, uh, calcium and manganese are present. Thus, we can uh, set forth the third position, the uh, so mineral lavozerite, based uh, on the type of pseudocubic clusters containing a silicate ring and a seam of population of cation positions. La Lubunzevite group minerals are natural microporous framework titans of complex composition, as shown here. The structure of these minerals is based on uh, so change the vertex bound titanium and niobium of the hydrons in two directions bound together by uh, ring by the rings. This uh, framework contains uh, cavities and channels filled with alkaline and alkaline earth cations and water molecules. For uh, monoclinal representatives of the group, octahedrons as D, D position should be noted that most of the monoclean representatives of the group are described in the, within the n half uh, monoclean minerals 
in uh, angstrom in addition to that a monoclinic with double para parameter uh, and two possible spatial groups c2 slash m or uh, these are so-called ordered labanzovites uh, such double parameter are called ordered labanzovites and here is connected with alternative isomorphism in C and D positions. As we de have demonstrated earlier, uh, such isomorphism is accompanied by splitting of positions uh, into C, 1, C2, and D1, 2. Uh, to interpret this uh, cationic ordering, the following model can be offered. Labanzovite structures divided into blocks with approximately of the following sizes. CD cations are located only in diagon diagonally connected blocks. Thus, the complete structure of Labanzovite groups will be a chessboard alternation of CD blocks and the column of empty blocks. If we are dealing with fully ordered Labanzovite, a subgroup of a single param parameter, Cation, uh, thus we get uh, C uh, and this complete ordering, uh, fully ordered minerals, cations, and alternation of CD, CD blocks. At that, in the uh, A, B, H, C block, it will be connected with uh, four D blocks, and vice versa. Such minerals uh, will demonstrate uh, and belong to parallelabanzavite group. But in reality, in practice, this is the third variant, uh, often seen by researchers with diffuse diffusion. And in this case, the ordering along the C axis uh, is preserved. But in the AB plane, uh, the ordering is lost, and the C block will be connected with C blocks and vice versa. Such minerals are called partly uh, ordered and belong to a, a, a organovite group and with double C parameter. Such approach to Labonzovite minerals can may describe not only three types of ordering, but provide the main characteristics of uh, diffuse scattering briefly shown in this slide. Thus, uh, we may uh, set forth the fourth provision, formation of KTN ordered substructures in minerals of labunzavite groups connected with formation of a single dimension uh, axis of ordered alternating uh, CD blocks. Observed uh, of diffusion of diffusion is connected with a reduction of uh, scattering cations in neighboring. And the last part of my presentation shall be of the high temperature be behavior. And the first one is uh, astrophilite, consists of HOH blocks, where the main uh, the uh, Fe2 plus of the octahedral layer and part of the is uh, protonated and titanium uh, is found in the D position is uh, coordinated with five oxygen atoms and one position of Thor uh, through this connection is realized between uh, between two neighboring HOH blocks uh, which is crucial for astrophilite uh, when heated to 475 degrees the structure of uh, uh, astrophilite is, experiences expansion it's perpendicular to H or H blocks as could be expected for structures with layered motif. At temperature of 500, 550 degrees, the crystalline structure of astrophilite is trans, uh, transforms into with uh, iron oxidation and a sharp decrease in the parameters of the unit cell, as can be seen here. This phase tra transition uh, is re uh, from DSC data, uh, I infrared spectrum. These uh, A oscillations is absent, which indicates its deprotonation. Uh, uh, 
deprotonate, deprotonated. According to Mosbauer spectroscopy, astrophilite contains only Fe2+, and its high temperature modification contains only uh, Fe3+, which indicate, testifies of uh, oxidation. According to the structural data, uh, demonstrate reduction uh, of oxygen cation for three out of four independent octahedrons uh, where iron was present. Calculations show uh, increase in valence forces of dehydroxylation. In addition, an increase in valence forces for position F, which indicates that the process of iron oxidation is accompanied not only by defluorination. The group contains astrophilite cannot compensate oxidation of all Fe2 plus iron. So additional mechanism is needed and compensation of additional charges formed on the octahedral layer oxygen as a result of the oxidation is achieved by shifting the titanium atom in the octahedron. It should be said that oxidation of iron for other minerals has been described containing Fe2+. This slide demonstrates tourmaline and as a as a, a mica and as you can see the change of volume of initial and high temperature phases is a astrophilite is much higher than for other described groups of minerals uh, buffetocyte though it belongs to a different type of uh, buffetocyte it uh, belongs to a different class, but is uh, similar. Close uh, structures are based on H H blocks, and the main cation of the octahedral layer and some oxygen atoms of the octahedral layer are protonated. So we may expect the same high temperature behavior of bifertisite. Uh, it's quite similar at temperature 450 degrees. The structure of bifertisite passes through transformation stages, stages with uh, iron oxidation. Uh, same methods as astrophilite. Uh, here, oxidation is only partial. Labanavite is structurally and chemically close to astrophilite, previously known as uh, magnesium astrophilite. Now it has its own name, labanavite, and belongs to a different subgroup of astrophilites. Fundamental structural features that it's uh, monoclean in the, and secondly, this uh, titanium here is in the pyrenees, so it's uh, unlike uh, tetra hydra. So there's no direct connection between neighboring HOH blocks. But uh, it increase in temperature, Labanet experiences conversions at. 550 degrees, the structure of labanavite experiences the high temperature phase accompanied by of the unit cell uh, because of thermal oxidation of iron, uh, which can be t uh, proved but with the same methods. Mm. Their transformation, similar to astrophilite, should call the um, of, uh, uh, valence force at the top of the pyramid of oxygen, but this does not happen because of redistribution of cations uh, of the M3 M, uh, and iron from uh, migrates to position M3 and uh, Mg and Mn occurs in the opposite direction. The migration occurs with a change in the average uh, bond length in these polyhedrons and redistribution uh, of this position. should be said that migration, redistribution of cations is unique to titanosilicates and apparently is a forced measure because the mechanism of structural st astrophilite compensation uh, due to displacement uh, is impossible for labanavite because here titanium is already in a pyramid and is practically fixed. Thus, we may uh, set forth the fifth provision when heating the layer titanosilicates containing Fe2 plus ions to 
450, 550, we observe transformation of initial mineral phases, oxidation, high temperature modifications. Their formation can be accompanied by reactions, uh, dehydroxyphilation uh, de and uh, defluorination. Uh, here, this summarizes the main results and the list of publications. I'd like to say that uh, last publication uh, uh, took place in 2020, so it is not included in the official list. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Andrei Anatolovich, for such an interesting and detailed presentation. Now, there is an opportunity to ask questions. I'm asking council members and others present, inviting anyone to ask questions. Uh, let me sit down, not to distract you. I have in slide nine, turned right, Time right, uh, oxygen appears in the end of the formula, and chilvenite, chilvenite, uh, no, uh, is, it doesn't come in the end. Is there any? Is there any special meaning in this? Let me go back. Separate oxygen, unbonded oxygen. I see. Yeah, this in this slide. Here, you mean tio. And Thai O2, is there any uh, significance? No, no significance. And then I have another question. And uh, how, uh, uh, how justified is the use of the term cluster? Because cluster complexes are bonded quite strongly through the same tetrahedrons. And in other uh, structures, titanosilicates in isol do they occur in isolated form? No. The structure, uh, Ilman Jokite, is unique. Uh, and maybe the term is not very good. Of course, this, uh, this based on Morrisonite, based on clusters, uh, but they are called. So we may suggest that for some complex minerals, some structural structures may occur. So these are like islands. So it's a way of description. The term is purely descriptive. Then I have another question. Slide 36, the uh, hydroxylation, is it complete uh, after heating? Uh, here the samples could be impure. So we judge uh, on uh, the basis of Ms. Bauer spectrography. So here we have for Fe2 plus iron. So is this transition uh, complete? According to Ms. Bauer's uh, spectrography, it is complete. In the case of Buffettesite, it's partial. And there are some reasons for that. And another question, uh, synthetic levels are right. How is, it, uh, how is it produced? Many There are many compounds with uh, such structures. And how are they obtained? Synthesized. Uh, they have different composition based on the same frame, with different cations. What is their synthesis method? Geothermal synthesis, I'm, I don't know exactly uh, what, which synthesis method is used. There are, if I'm not mistaken, the fourth way of structure, the fourth type of structure in natrium, niobium. Okay. So structurally, they are different. They are different from natural, or they are absolutely identical to the natural one, with the natural ones. Yeah, usually they repeat, but they, the contents are different, but the, uh, the module packaging is the same. And what is interesting, if we talk about synthetic, there is no cation deficient versions. They are always saturated cation uh, deficient versions are only occur in natural minerals <coughs> because cation deficient are formed through transformation of uh, cation saturated because the structure because of unstable structure large charges on oxygen and compensation uh, so the, the reason is the charge can be compensated and this leads to uh, decrease of cations, and over the time, 
they migrate in this direction under with uh, under certain circumstances thank you that's all more questions please Olga Viktorovna, uh, colleagues, L let me ask a question. Thank you. Let me ask the following question. I, I, it's, I'm curious about the practical use of titanium silicates. You say they have properties and can be used as matrices, as iron exchange properties, what, in your opinion, are have best prospects, and at what stage are they, and, and at what stage uh, this work is? Well, David, I thank you for this question, uh, and uh, Oleg Johannesovich uh, has asked me the same question. Indeed. The best known example is the, the right and its synthetic analogs, ETS4 uh, analog TS10, the brand names formerly used in uh, quite widely. Today, there are other brand names, Sitnakite and its synthetic analog, Yonsif, and they are used, still used in the US, tested on various objects for uh, extraction of uh, liquid nuclear waste. And there are other examples. I am for the synthetic brand name, analog of uh, as a synthetic analog. Quite a large number of uh, Quite a large number of minerals uh, has been synthesized uh, for ion exchange properties, including lemonzavite, uh, umbite, and some other minerals. For example, according to Grigory Yurievich Manuk, uh, who is an expert, major expert on miner in mineralogy, who has studied this issue such frame like is a frame structures frame like structures S and such uh, structure is uh, embedded in the very crystallography connected through common vertices such minerals are according to Grigory Yurovich darmbit imanite altesite Maravite and some others. Uh, and one of the most promising minerals of the Venekite group, named after Grigory Yurevich, is ion exchange experiments uh, at a scientific and technological level are now in progress. For example, in the Kola Scientific Center, the Nana Material Science, where such experiments are currently been conducted using such phases, which is uh, verified by grants, publications, and international recognition of such recent works, I may mention, may mention Galina Kalashnikova's thesis. Uh, such works, are mostly, are mostly talking of, uh, of fundamental research, are conducted at the Moscow Crystal uh, School of Crystal Chemistry, and here in St. Petersburg, uh, Daria Spiridonova defended her thesis on uh, synthetic analogs of xerite. Thus, this work is in progress, and of course, it started, it was popular 20 years ago, now the uh, creating matrices, maybe, is uh, the new mat people, uh, scientists are looking for new mattresses, as, uh, different mattresses, but uh, Sitnakite and Sif uh, and its compounds are still used, and hopefully, titan silicate matricates and titanate mattresses will be in demand in the future. And 
uh, one more minute. Uh, here is also interesting study of layered, not frame-like, but of layered compounds based on HOH blocks from the point of pillaring, pillaring this uh, uh, moving uh, interlayer space. Heterophyllous silicates are similar to phyllous silicates, and we can create the new, a new material in, and, and create new nanocomposite material. So here's there's a new. This is another line of research, another sphere of research. But uh, right now, it is mostly within the scope of, res of researchers. I have a and they have an, an additional question. You said that selective is abs uh, absorbs cesium. Uh, how this is uh, this selection explained? Cesium, strontia. Uh, it has better results. Uh, more questions, please. Andrei Anatolovich, I have a question about synthesis. A very short question. You mentioned the Kola Scientific Center and the experience with synthesis. And you have done a lot of work yourself to study the natural minerals. What would you recommend to those who will follow you in terms of synthesis? I will repeat myself. These are frame-like structures. Uh, should not be very complicated. Not uh, these. They these. They should be stable. Titanium silicate block observed in different minerals, and on the basis of which, for example, the minerals are based on this block, and then you may change cations without changing the structure and, for example, obtain pure titanium silicate block without any cations at all. So that will be the main structure. And synthetic analogs, such as ETS uh, 410, they are simplified analogs of minerals. Based on titanium silicate block and cation saturation will be different. There's based on uh, natrium or calcium. Uh, from so we get ideas from nature and uh, but synthesis uh, for synthesis we need serious technology because it's they are hard uh, to synthesize thank you maybe our colleagues working in the remote access mode Konstantin Viktorovich, Evgeny Vadimovich. If you have any questions, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. I have a question about uh, the studied titanium silicates. What is the temperature ra range of their formation? Because your work contains information on high temperature phases and low temperature phases. What is their stability structure that will impact their, their use uh, in the future as prototypes for some solvents for cesium, for example. So I have a question about temperatures. Thank you, uh, Yevgeny Vadimovich, for this good question. This question is hard to answer because for each mineral, uh, formation conditions are different, but generally they are not high temperature minerals. There was a question about structural isomorphism in same minerals in the same group uh, formed at various temperatures. For Lebensweit, uh has low temperature formations, about 200 degrees, medium range. Initial, we, we have initial minerals. 
contain water and they are secondary. And then there are initial or primary. The temperature can be evaluated as 200, 400 degrees. And uh, stability is different. If uh, you have lots of water, water will evaporate and the frame uh, will become stable until 600, 700 degrees, except for uh, some dehydrated phases. But in uh, uh, here, I may say that they are more chemically stable. And in this respect, they are more, they have better prospects compared with traditional. And that is why uh, scientists started studying them some years ago, because for by formation, they are more stable, they're stronger. Thank you. I have, I feel you're very involved. You, if you could, may I make one more comment, please? In your work, you have described neptunite. Are these, these are high temperature minerals, their structure and the structure of most minerals. Is there any, what is the main difference between them? Neptunite uh, may be formed at various temperatures, like pigmatite 700, 800 degrees, but uh, neptunite itself is secondary. Uh, after transformation of another titanium silicate, and it is formed at different temperatures, uh, ordered and non-ordered cation distribution by position, depending on the temperature and different spatial groups. But there is more high temperature than other compared with other minerals, though different structural modifications occur depending on the temperature. And that is why they it's hard to compare them with other titanium silicates. Thank you. Thank you. Konstantin Viktorovich, do you have any questions? Yeah, I have. Uh, let me ask one small question. In your report, you have not m mentioned, but you, uh, in your thesis, you say that transformation of labanavite after high temperature study is uh, reversible. No, they are irreversible. With Laganovite, you say that it is transformed into low temperature modification. No, no, that's unlikely. Because they are all irreversible, otherwise we won't be able to uh, study. Uh, their physical properties change uh, by firing and without high temperature transition transformation have you studied the samples do they preserve parameters of the unit self or volatile components are lost and modifications uh, initial astrophilite and high structure, their structure uh, structurally similar. The structure remains the same. The geographic parameters change, connected with uh, bond lengths, and uh, iron is oxidized, but the structures remain the same uh, during this transition. And at 700, 750 degrees, uh, they fall into other components, and the same structure parameters of unit cell uh, do they change? Yes, of course, they change. First, there is uh, expansion, uh, anisotropic, uh, perpendicular to HOH blocks. And then there's a uh, sudden, and then the parameters change. And, and then they are, again, they are reduce. And then I have another question. Uh, when heating, they lose components, these minerals lose components, 
may it have uh, may there be no oxidation at all uh, uh, oxygen environment should be removed why in presence of oxygen environment uh, we conducted uh, uh, with without oxygen uh, there is no oxidation it's only expansion occurs there's no iron uh, oxidation there are minerals have you uh, said so maybe briefly but in the about oxidation uh, mostly I we talk about oxidation there are minerals for example uh, hydra talcite groups without even without heating they transfer to fe3 plus state uh, temperature is one of the possible factors but for these if we remove oxygen there will be no trans transition no transformation thank you dear colleagues do we have more questions then i have two questions one very easy and very simple and brief and i will ask you to give short answers could you go to slide number seven where you show Chervinsk iite the nice picture of Chervinsk iite yeah this paper this i liked it in your thesis i can see the group in the profile so my question is this structure you described so well the combination of columns uh, and octahedron packages maybe the uh, terminology is bad this is an interesting frame but this uh, act as a stapler which uh, uh, bind them together as in borates and here I have a question which may appear simple maybe this uh, should not uh, silicate but complex oxide from the point of crystal chemistry all the geometry all the structure is based not on that this is a question of terminology the structure can be described uh, silica diorthal groups on all other cations will be frame like so there will be no walls so this is just a method of visualization that is why I am asking this question because it's uh, very your, they, your presentation is very nice there's no uh, you remove the silicate properties if a borate as it will be a borate complex here the main thing is a radical titanium silicate titanium silicate uh, please uh, so this is only a method of visualization uh, in your presentation oct uh, groups and uh, blocks they are not all octahedron shaped this is a simplified model and my second question maybe is a little bit similar the work is crystal chemistry of titanium silicates i don't want to argue uh, can you briefly explain what titanium provides how does it contribute the structure of these minerals uh, very briefly have, there are two components here and there's a similar question in uh, the review of Oleg Yohannesovich, a structural component and the chemical component. From the chemical, because these minerals are of uh, alkaline nature, so they contain a large number of cations, the structural diversity uh, based on, so the basis is titanium silicate radical, and by joining octahedrons of uh, different radio, different elements which is in uh, tetrahedron octahedron we is a main feature of uh, crystal chemistry 
they are not connected through ribs, only through common vertices. Uh, and at the same time, octahedron can be polymerized. In addition, such structures always contain large number of low valency cations uh, prevail in these structures, which is also a key key feature. And if we talk about frame-like, they contain many channels, which is also a feature, but not all, as, as you can see when analyzing all the minerals. So these are the two components, the structural diversity and chemical. Thank you. Um, your answer is clear. Do we have maybe uh, the guests have questions? I see no questions. Then have we received any questions online? No. Okay, then we are, let's proceed to the next point of our procedure, speeches of the uh, dissertation council members, dear colleagues, dear council members, the floor is yours. I invite each of you to give your opinions, but please remember that your reviews have been published at university website, so we don't need to read the entire review. So maybe you have new, impre you got impressions, so you may present your opinion uh, freely. Olga Viktorovna, I'd like to give the floor to you. Thank you. Could you speak up a little bit because we can't hear you very well? Olga Viktorovna, can you hear me now? Yes, 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 now we can hear you, thank you. In the, first of all, I'd like to say that the work by Andrei Anatolievich is a uh, highly uh, qualified, very strong, detailed study, scientific novelty of the results is beyond any doubt. In my review, I have discussed in detail uh, this scientific novelty and practical significance of this work and I think that Andrei Anatolievich has demonstrated this uh, excellently in answering questions, so I will not uh, expand on this. So I'll just say that uh, the work of Andrei Anatolievich has been uh, done only on minerals, but we know that the world of minerals uh, has not has been quite well studied and studied in detail, and only complex object remain unexplored uh, with which Andrei Anatolievich is dealing. So it was very interesting for me to read uh, about the structure of Imal Jerkite. This is a very complex structure. Uh, this uh, excellent continuation, Andrei Anatolievich said in his report that this mineral was discovered by the Leningrad School graduates of our department. This mineral was discovered by Irina Slavna Busse, one of the first one of our first graduates who has worked for many years on the Kola Peninsula and in when we visit museums we see various minerals collected by her and the first detailed description, first attempt to define symmetry of this mineral was done by Yelena Alexeyevna Goiko. So maybe uh, some of you remember Yelena Alexeyevna, uh, who has worked at the Kola Peninsula, maintained connection with our department, took part in various field trips. And I think this uh, continuation, Yelena uh, Alexeyevna, uh, many attempts were made to decipher this structure. Andrei Anatolievich, uh, this before he was born, so 50 years later, he has deciphered this structure. So this continuation is very impressive. And uh, next, what I would like to add, when you, when you read this thesis, 
is uh, this is hard work because often you have to figure out what the author is trying to say so maybe uh, but reading the thesis by Andrei Anatolievich uh, uh, it was a pleasure it is it's I would like all the works to be like this a work I would like to write very clear very concise very detailed so when I came to the end of this thesis I uh, have to make critical remarks I uh, found that I have no critical comments no questions but uh, I need to ask some questions so let me ask my questions and some of these comments, I already know answers. And one of the questions, uh, Andrea Anatolich has already gave a very detailed answer during the discussion part. So first, is connected with the reason for high quality R factors of structural uh, structures included in the work. So it will be interesting to uh, know why this occurred. What can this be connected with? Maybe this is connected with some uh, deficiency of these structures. That uh, three periodic model cannot be taken into consideration. Also, I have a question about why isomorphism when these minerals there's a wide range of iron replacement. And what is nice, is especially in this work, unlike in many other works, there's a very careful approach to chemical analysis for all minerals, very detailed chemical analysis has been in various laboratories. Comparisons are made when formulas are given always to see if there is a comparison of their uh, distribution properties, experimentally determined and calculated. So this, all, the, all these things make very good impression. So what do you think? How and how unambiguous is the distribution of elements in crystallographic positions? and how reliable are the crystal chemical formulas obtained and finally my third comment i'll just read it because uh, what of the known titanous silica should have good ion exchange properties and in conclusion i'd like to say that the traditional ending the thesis by andrea natori zolterov for the on the theme crystal chemistry natural tennis corresponds to the main requirements set by the order uh, on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant, Andrei Anatolievich Zolterov, deserves awarding the degree of Doctor of Sciences, specialty 25005, Mineralogy and Crystallography. Thank you. Thank you, Olga Viktorovna. Andrei Torch, would you like to answer briefly? As for our factor, you have answered yourself. These are complex minerals, high R factors are usually often connected with poor quality of crystals. This depends on many factors, instability, dehydration, uh, etc. But even for most complex minerals, uh, the R factor is no less than 9%, which is normal for such complex titanous silicates. There are, uh, in some minerals, R factor can be 15 or 20, and for simple structures, such as Lavoisierite group, Labunzevite, here R factors do not exceed 5%. So this is connected with the quality of the samples and uh, the uh, reasons you have uh, listed. As for isomorphic, uh, isomorphic schemes, this is one of the most difficult tasks. Uh, crystal, a crystallography is facing because even within the same structure the same cations may get into different positions so here uh, we are working on the basis of direct data and we look at additional parameters uh, such as uh, valence force uh, new, uh, the uh, formulas electro neutrality data must bounce spectro spectroscopy and analysis of related structures 
and accepted nomenclature rules for such types of compounds. And as for the type in which I will not repeat myself. Thank you. OK, now I'd like to give the floor to Boris Evgenovich Burakov. Oh, what is your opinion of this, of this work? Dear colleagues, if you allow me, I will not read my review. It is available easily. I will just summarize the key points. In my opinion, uh, the work is very systematic, contains good analysis. Uh, well, it has been analyzed very well, and the work is very well presented, uh, very accurate translation into English. I'd like to mention. So the work gives very makes very good impression uh, by means of critical remark, maybe not a very serious one, a critical remark. I'd like to say that, in my opinion, some provisions look like conclusions, resemble conclusions, very important. But for example, a second provision does not need uh, uh, any proof, but uh, let me repeat that this is a very the work is this is very good work, which deserves the highest uh, praise, and by as a, as a recommendation, I would recommend the author to focus on synthesis analogs of these minerals to develop the applied aspect. And I will not read the the work deserves high assessment, and the author deserves under the Anthology Zolotarev deserves awarding the degree of Doctor of uh, Crystallography and Mineralogy. Thank you, thank you. So I, I don't see there is any. Is there? A, I agree with Boris Evgenovich. Maybe some provisions uh, should be formulated differently but they contain generalizations, so they coincide with the results. Then let me help you and answer Boris again according to the provision. According to the regulation, a provision uh, doesn't have to be a hypothesis. It can be a result of some work. So the results can be uh, uh, set forth as provisions. Uh, Johannesovich, welcome. I will join what my colleagues have already said uh, as an expert on deciphering. Uh, I have no doubt about the st uh, structure of any. The work is built according to the modern principles. All the result have, results have been published, validated. This explains very careful uh, a representation of the material. Yet, I have several questions, some of which Andrei Anatolich has already answered during our discussion. So here are my questions. Oh, the, from Can be explained titanosilicates? Uh, which mineral among titanosilicates is so complex with a great number of cation and ion positions, contains many different non-frame interlayer positions, several degrees of oxidation. And for me, this they uh, resemble cell lights by uh, large uh, uh, titanium silicates. Uh, they are accessory and rare minerals not found anywhere in significant quantities. Why is this, you think? Uh, the second question, the formulas of the studied minerals, because of their complexity, are quite long. And these formulas are not given uh, uniformly, somewhere in brackets, somewhere in parentheses. So sometimes there's, there's another is square brackets, and there are some typers. Since the work is on crystal chemistry, is it possible to distinguish titanium silica structures in formulas, for example, silicates or alumosilicates? And that would make it easier 
to compare minerals and to classify all these minerals. In my last question, uh, so many of the minerals presented contain amount, significant amounts of water and or hydroxyl groups. Uh, is this confirmed? This is this this amount of water and uh, hydroxyl groups uh, confirmed by independent methods. And let me read before it was a must. I don't know if it is still obligatory. The last uh, paragraph. The thesis by Zutter on the, on the on, uh, crystal chemistry corresponds to the basic requirements set by the order, the 1st of September 2016, on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicants, Zoltar of Andrea Anatolic, deserves a awarding degree of Doctor of Geological Mineralogical Sciences, Specialty 25005, Mineralogy and Crystallography. Article 11 has not been violated. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Andrea Anatolic. Uh, let me answer your questions briefly. I have answered your first question partly already. The minerals in alkaline structures and formation of such complex structures is typical for alkaline conditions and Hibini and Lavazer massives uh, are champions for the amount of new minerals uh, and also for diversity. Also, many uh, materials are secondary transformation mineral minerals. In addition, this, there are some simple silicates such as penetrite and some others and but as you have said according to the quantity of zeolites and similarity to zeolites yes they are similar as for uh, rock uh, uh, they are um, rock forming, uh, they are endemic, some are endemic. As for the formulas, I beg you, I apologize if any formulas are written incorrectly and for any typers. As for, there are no general rules, as uh, titanium silicate radicals. Here, the historical point plays a, has a role here, it's customary for specific group of minerals and general class For titanium silicates, it, uh, it it can be, but it will work only for similar structures, such as for 45 minerals of uh, siderite sub supergroup. They have a clear nomenclature uh, based on amount of uh, titan titanium. Then there could be different approaches. For example, the resin approach of description where uh, of uh, uh, tetrahedra and octahedrons. So they agree with, uh, in, with the uh, general um, so, uh, water for new minerals. It was uh, measured by, by with Penfield method. Of course, not all the water uh, can be, uh, water can be non-structural and that will increase or uh, data. So for some minerals, it's given, you have to be careful. So some ones given for N, and we're given some limits. <coughs> so because with water, as in zeolites, the same problem exists in zeolites. And uh, for new minerals, the amount of water was determined as uh, structural and non-structural water and spectroscopic methods and indirect methods. And for new minerals, the amount of water was determined directly. These are, these are my answers. Thank you. Thank you. And dear colleagues, Evgeny Vadimovich, the floor is yours. Thank you. Dear colleagues, I read the reviews of all the opponents and my review is huge it's five pages long but it contains no critical remarks because it only lists uh, a novelty 
relevance and advantages of this work. So I will allow myself uh, not to read my review. As for critical remarks, I will ask Andrei Anatolievich to answer only one question, and this question about uh, the question is about. So the question is very specific. How the position of ban from CO3 group changed when we uh, face the uh, oxygen protonation process? How will this ban move, uh, move or shift? And in conclusion, because uh, I don't have any other uh, critical remarks, I'd like to emphasize one thing. My, uh, I have a, question, a formal question. How long has it taken you to write this work, such a, such a massive work? How long has it taken? Thank you, Evgeny Vadimovich, for this question, for all your comments. They are very valuable. I especially liked your high night and earring kite. I liked your comment very much because this is a very complex question, but you have not asked this question, I will not answer. So, and, uh, so how long uh, has it taken you to write this thesis? As uh, this is a compound work uh, based on many publications, so the translation, uh, maybe, the, and putting it into uh, s bringing all my findings together. Uh, the organization took about one year. I think this is the only drawback because which doesn't depend on you because why repeat, why bring all this information together? You could have put together all your articles and then it will take uh, much less time. This is only a comment. As for carbonate and hydrocarbonate groups, in your review, uh, I agree with you, with your uh, explanation, because you are one of the uh, major experts on this. Uh, one thing I'd like to say that here, of course, in protonating one of the oxygen CO3 groups uh, does not affect the CO distance and maybe it's in, uh, incorrect to talk about uh, hydrocarbonate uh, bands in the spectrum and to defend myself I may say that analyzing literature uh, there is a lot of confusion in this so that is why the interpretations given in my work and uh, in my publications are based on literature analysis for other uh, rare earth elements. But of course, I agree with your comment that here maybe their interpretation is wrong, incorrect. And hydrocarbonate groups it's based on indirect parameters uh, val local valence valency balance and, uh, interlayer distance and behavior at high temperatures uh, uh, cation deficient analog when heating uh, and such indirect parameters is a reasonable compensation scheme, the cat cation compensation scheme. So all these indirect indicators enabled us to, to decide the uh, uh, polycarbonate. Uh, this is, uh, I'm satisfied with your answer, and may I conclude my review with a traditional phrase, the thesis fully corresponds to the requirements in 250025 mineralogy and crystallography 
as it contains new data and makes a significant contribution to contemporary mineralogy and crystallography. Uh, it is indeed so because so physically you can evaluate when we see a work which we review sometimes uh, we have to answer this question what's new about this work we may very easily answer this uh, question yeah. and so the thesis by Andrei Andolis on uh, crystal chemistry of natural titanium corresponds to all the requirements applied uh, to doctoral thesis and the author deserves awarding the degree of doctor of uh, geological mineralogical sciences special 25005 mineralogy and crystallography thank you very much thank you very much Evgeny Vadimovich for your words I have a small comment uh, according to the provision at our university it is impossible so the rules are what they are, but uh, we are thinking about that, and maybe in the future it will become pos it will be possible. I see. Konstantin Viktorovich Litasov, the floor is yours. Here uh, in your documents, make the changes. Yes, I'm Konstantin Dmitri. My name is Konstantin Dmitrievich. After reading this thesis, I. Uh, had a very good feeling the, everything is very well written S since crystallography is not my main subject I've never come across such complex structures I mostly work with high pressure and meteorites so here the structures are so complex it's hard to think has hard to how to figure them out uh, so everything is very well written. As a meteorologist, uh, in this, uh, you have not touched upon the main mineral associations. Here, of course, you are talking about new minerals. As you have not touched about the main uh, mineral association, how it was formed. This was my only remark uh, to this thesis and everything else is very well written i see it took andrea Anatolich the entire year to write i think it was completely worth it because uh, it's uh, uh, you never enjoy reading uh, careless text so here everything is very well written the text is excellent and the thesis corresponds to the basic requirements uh, on awarding the degrees and the degree applicant deserves being awarded the degree of doctor of geological and mineralogical sciences in mineralogy and crystallography thank you thank you Konstantin Dmitrievich I beg your pardon it was my mis for uh, my mistake. Uh, I uh, there is it, it's more uh, of a suggestion. Thank you for your review, Konstantin Dmitrievich. As for uh, the mineralogical description, it uh, comes in uh, my. It was given in my articles. We're talking about new minerals. I have not included it in my thesis only made reference to it because my uh, part was uh, crystal chemical but thank you for your question thank you Konstantin Dmitrievich are you satisfied yes thank you and now is time for me to present my review a lot has been said so I will be brief I would like to focus on the three points uh, first the subject of the object of the study though it is dedicated to different minerals uh, and based on different publication it silicate uh, containing titanium on the one hand and on the other hand these are minerals of uh, alkaline 
mineral and for as for mineralogist uh, I uh, liked that uh, the author mostly speaks about minerals so this claim uh, to geology and to mineralogy uh, to me seems very reasonable the second thing what I'd like to mention is that the novelty the novelty of the work and I agree with Evgeny Vadimovic this novelty is really palpable um, the structure new minerals deciphering structure of known minerals that have not, not been deciphered before so clarifying the composition of several clarification of composition of modifications this is a, a important contribution into uh, crystal chemistry uh, I like the uh, term titanium containing silicates and finally this high qualification uh, high good skills uh, with various method and of course no mono crystal mapping this is not the first work and every time I admire but here uh, there are some uh, parts which I especially liked page 88 and uh, slide 18 in your presentation these are Ilma Jokite mineral looked at this picture when I saw it all my uh, imagination I was overwhelmed and then I uh, and then I realized this is the third most complex mineral and then uh, Andre started explaining and uh, was the fact that he has figured it out this demonstrates his high qualification and his command of the method brilliantly and because of that I'd like to my what was not mentioned by my colleagues I enjoyed uh, today's report and presentation and uh, in such simple words to present the results in uh, such a simple way uh, make it comprehensible to this uh, demonstrates high qualification of the applicant as the beauty is in the light of the truth and how the work is well presented demonstrates excellent skills and high professional skills of Andrei Anatolievich and uh, I will read the uh, final phrase that the thesis by Andrei Anatolievich Zolterov on the theme crystal chemistry of Titan State corresponds to the requirements set by the order and awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University and the degree applicant and Anatolievich Zolterov deserves awarding the degree of Doctor of Mineralogy specialty 25005 uh, uh, mineralogy and crystallography article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated Andrei Anatolievich I think there is no need I have not asked any questions just uh, praised you and next uh, uh, we have the time for open discussion where any anyone is so maybe we don't have many guests today, so dear colleagues, now you have the opportunity to criticize or maybe to praise the thesis. The, the, so this is, so you, this, it's not like New Year party, it doesn't happen every year, so now you have the opportunity to speak. Okay. So please come over here and please introduce yourself. We need this for the minutes of the meeting, official minutes. Panikarovsky Taras, engineer cathedra. Engineer crystallography department. As a student of Andrei Anatolievich, since my second year. I uh, did my course projects under his guidance and I would like to express my sincere gratitude to him as my teacher because thanks to him I learned some skills such as take failure easily. It's 
uh, we all try to discover new minerals. We are all trying to discover new minerals. Well, and working, I gave to Sergeyevich new mineral, who, because this mineral was not new, but I'm not upset, and I'm optimistic about the future. So thank you very much, Andrei Anatolovich, for the positive attitude to our work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sergei Nikolaevich. Ritvin Sergei Nikolaevich, professor of the crystallography department of the Earth Sciences Institute of St. Petersburg University. I'd like to say some good words about my colleague, Andrei Anatolovich, about the scientific level. I think it's, uh, it is obvious to everybody today that he deserves the degree. Also, I would like to add that in addition to scientific work, uh, he's a great, a great organizer for various reasons. Uh, he's very hardworking. And as one of the outcomes of this is this, an, is this excellent work. And the siphon Ilma Jokite is uh, no good luck. This, uh, it didn't come at once. Some brilliant crystallographers, crystal chemists, from different countries tried to do, and this makes us all admire and respect him. So I'm very glad that uh, it has happened, and hopefully the decision will be positive. Thank you. Dear colleagues, uh, is anyone else willing to speak? Then I have to ask if we received any uh, applications online, then let us proceed to the next item, speech of the academic consultant. Andrei Anatolovich, you may sit down. Uh, Doctor of uh, Krivovich, Dr. Krivovich, Doctor of Mineralogy, Head of Department of Crystallography of St. Petersburg University. Thank you very much. Uh, dear council members, dear colleagues, uh, Olga Viktorovna already presented this work, the historical aspect, and I'd like to say that the study of titanium silicates is a Russian history uh, altogether, started with Firstman, and uh, books, uh, Firstman's team, uh, the minerals of Kibin Tundra, such great scientists, Laguntsov, Monstrinkevich, Dr. Monstrinkevich took part, Irina Vladimirovna, Vladislavna, Busse, Boris Mikhailovich Kupletsky took part in it. So it's interesting that many works in, at Leningrad and Petersburg University were connected with the Kola Peninsula, but mostly mineralogical. We may mention here Alexander Muharenko. Kalidolden complex and the entire team Olga Mikhailovna, Rimska, Korsakova, Andrei Gulak, uh, who has passed away recently. I will not mention younger, the younger colleagues, but this tradition of studying the alkaline complexes of the Kola Peninsula is very closely connected with the, the Kola Peninsula in St. Petersburg or Leningrad University. And I would like to say that was the first doctoral thesis written here at St. Petersburg University, which is dedicated to mineralogy, a crystal chemistry of uh, the Kola Peninsula. This, it is, this is very rewarding. And I'd like to emphasize that Olga Viktorovna uh, shows there's lots of tradition. This is a beautiful work. And here, indeed, the crystal chemistry of those of the Kola titanium silicates and mineralogy of the Kola Peninsula minerals uh, mostly was explored by Moscow colleagues. And uh, the candidate's th uh, thesis of Andrei Anatolovich 
was so bitterly criticized by some representatives of the crystallography department of the Moscow University, crystallography and crystal chemistry. But this is a theme of the past now. I think now his doctoral thesis has summed it all up. But what I wanted to say here, indeed, the contribution of Andrei Anatolovich to the study of titanium silicates is significant, is really significant. And the new uh, Commission for New Minerals, Zolot Revit, is being reviewed by the Commission. So maybe uh, I, it's too early to mention it. Uh, this mineral, uh, Lavazerite, between the right, which is new, not including Andrei Andorovich's presentation, and Litvinskite. And so I'd like to say here that maybe I am the first person, the first man to see the drawbacks of this work. And uh, it really uh, hurt me to hear wrong wordings. So I will not uh, mention them to you now. What I wanted to say in conclusion is that I think when I think about my the defense of my doctoral thesis, I understand that the doctoral thesis is only a beginning of your life as a scientist, at least by today. But as I look back today, uh, my work had so many drawbacks. Uh, I should have thought about it differently, but crystal structures and how they behave and I want, in conclusion, I would like to wish that after 10 years, Andrei Anatolovich to look at this work as a, as a intermediate state step in his scientific career and wish him lots of success uh, with his intuition, his horizons, uh, let his scientific horizons to become even wider. Thank you. Thank you, Sergei Vladimirovich. Thank you for your evaluation, for your opinion, and for the, your uh, wish to move forward. Let us proceed to the next point, the next point of our agenda. And I have to ask our colleagues uh, working the remote access mode. Do you, dear colleagues, have any questions or claims uh, to the procedure? Maybe uh, something uh, is not clear. Maybe something uh, could not, something didn't. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Konstantin Dmitrievich? Konstantin Dmitrievich, can you hear us? Hello. Yes, I have no questions. I wanted to emphasize once again, I heard Sergei Nikolaj Britvin's that the most complex structure is a role, special role of Andrei Anatolovich and also is so impressed. I'm very impressed with this. So we have no uh, critical remarks uh, uh, regarding today's session. So let us proceed to the final. One of the final parts is voting of the dissertation council members. Dear colleagues, according to the protocol, I have to ask you if we need to uh, have a private discussion or there is need, no need to do so. No need for, for a private discussion. We don't need a private discussion. Yevgeny Vadimovich. I don't I don't see any need to do so. Everything is clear. I've said everything I wanted to say, Konstantin Dmitrievich. All members of the dissertation council have the same opinion. Then let us uh, the most important moment is coming. I put the question of awarding 
uh, to Zoltarev Andrei Anatolievich, the degree of uh, Doctor of Geological Neurological Sciences, Specialty 250005, Mineralogy and Crystallography, to open individual voting. Let me remind you that the decision of the decision council on awarding the degree shall be considered positive if more than a half, but not less than three members of the decision council uh, present vote for it. Let's vote. Olga Viktorovna, your opinion? Please switch the microphone on. I certainly vote for voting the degree. Boris Evgenovich, I vote for, of course. Uh, Oleg Yohannesovich, yes, of course, I vote for. Evgeny Vadimovich, I vote for. Konstantin Dmitrievich, I am for awarding the degree. And I also, I am also for awarding the degree. Thus, dear colleagues and guests, Friends, let me inform you that out of six members, voting members of the Dissertation Council, six voted for awarding the degree, no one voted against awarding the degree, and no one abstained. Thus, the decision to award to Zoltarev Andrei Anatolievich the degree of Doctor of Geological and Mineralogical Sciences, specialty 25005, Mineralogy and Crystallography, has been made. Let's congratulate. And now, dear colleagues, I have to ask if you have any questions or mm -hmm. comments regarding to the procedure. And uh, Andrei Anatolovich, I'd like to give the floor to you. I would like to thank, first of all, all the members of the dissertation council for their hard work and kind words the chairman of the council for his extra work additional work for his uh, and for your interesting questions also i would like to thank all the uh, services all the departments of st petersburg university who organized the dissertation council activity support department represented by Yekaterina, who's present here and St. Petersburg University. Also, I would like to thank all my colleagues, without whom this work would not be, my work would not be possible. You can see uh, the names in this slide, and of course, the list is not complete. But also, if I forgot to mention someone, please uh, forgive me. Uh, also, I'd like to thank all the uh, members of my uh, department resource center and of the crystallography department and mineral mineralogy department. I am very grateful to my colleagues, one of whom spoke here, Panikarovsky and uh, Ekaterina Sergeyevna Zhitova, who are now uh, our graduates. So we have worked a lot together. So now they are head of laboratories in different parts, mineralogical laboratories in different parts of our country. And I'm also very grateful to my teacher, uh, Sergei Vladimirovich uh, Krivovich, without, without whom I would not become a researcher, to everyone present here today and watched uh, online broadcast. I'm very grateful to also to all my friends, all my family, my wife, Catherine, for her moral support at all the stages of my work. Thank you. Thank you, Andrei Anatolovich. Let me, on, behalf, on your behalf, congratulate Andrei Anatolovich and give him a round of applause. Dear colleagues, at that, our session is over. I thank all of you, and uh, we will be happy to see you in person. Thank you for finally giving your time and effort, and I uh, hope to see you many times again in the future. Uh, thank you for giving your time.
to our applicant, to all of us, dear colleagues, thank you very much. Please stop uh, online broadcasting. Thank you.